welcome back. No, that's, that's not for you. Well, we have a sort of project video for today. It's not exactly a project video. Project videos are Sunday, but kind of, sort of. All right, we will get into that when we come back. What do I mean when I say it's kind of a project? Um, yeah, I, okay, you can stay right there. Remember our shade pieces. Now, this is Jocelyn's two-tier mid-century shade. This is part of it. This is the shade we were comparing it to. Remember, they are both parchment pieces, and I wanted to get this piece as clean as this one. I think I've done a pretty good job except what you, well, you're right here so you don't need to fuss please note we have rust stains right along mostly on the inside here now the shade ugh, stay. the shade goes together like this you know with our smaller piece sort of pointing up rather like a little funnel on the top. So, this had gone on a lamp that was dark brown, chocolate brown. And I had a couple of choices about how to redo this when we start doing the lacing. I can do chocolate brown, but I decided to, instead to use this. This is a transparent gimp. Um, it's got a yellowish cast to it and glitter in it. So it's sort of gold glitter. Now, when we start relacing the shade, I will actually show you a picture of a 1950s fiberglass shade that has been laced with this kind of gimp so that you can see why I chose it. In the biggest advantage is that it will give this shade a lot of versatility. This will go with anything. The downside, however, is whereas brown gimp through these holes would help to disguise the rust, this is not hiding anything. So, we need to deal with the rust. As I say, I feel pretty good about how clean I got it overall, but not the staining. So, here's what we're going to do. Wrong way. OxyClean. And what I have here is this wonderful little gloopy paste of oxyclean and water. That's all there is to it. And I am going to sort of you know, that down on its side. Pop this onto the shade. Um, I'm just going to lay it right here. I've got some clogs on the table and I am going to dump a little bit of this gloopy stuff on top and sort of smush it in, smush, 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 in the hopes that it will help me get rid of the rust. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do all of it at once. The reason I'm not going to be able to do all of it at once is because it's round. So when it's on the little cloth on the table, it's like this. And I'll be able to do this little bit and this little bit right around the eyelets and then in about half an hour or so I'm going to come along and see how well it's come out if everything's sort of come off or it's coming off I'll just come back and do it again and again 
until we have most of the rust gone. Now this larger piece, there are a few faint rust marks that you can see here. Um, yeah, right there and some others right along this edge. I'm going to see if I can get those off too, but those are very light and they probably will not mark the appearance of the shade. So if this were all of the rust that was left, I might let it go. But with the other piece having quite so much rust, I'm afraid I can't. So the reason this is sort of a semi-project video is because we started cleaning last week. Um, these shades, someone had suggested in the comments that it was probably a lampshade in a smoker's household. Well, given the fact that 50% of all the households in the U.S. were smoking households back in the 1950s, I would say, oh yeah, that's probably a pretty safe bet. The yellowish cast, and we've still got a bit of yellow. Um, I know it's hard to see, but when these shades are next to each other in person, you can really see it a little better. A little bit of a yellowish cast, not too bad. I'm not displeased with the way this came out. Overall, I think that between the Magic Eraser and the, uh, the soap, which was just on dishwashing liquid, um, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it came out. I really am. But we're just not quite, well, I'm not going to say not good enough. The problem with dealing with old items like this, keeping in mind, this lampshade is probably at least 60 to 70 years old. We know it's a classic mid-century piece no matter what you do to it, it's still going to be 60 to 70 years old. That's a fact. We can't change that fact. Are we ever going to get it back to brand new, squeaky clean, perfect, perfect? Maybe not. Maybe not. And in fact, it could be unreasonable for us to hold out hope for that. I think we have to we have to consider that the piece is going to be an older repaired piece would we'll do the best we can. Now, it's, that's hard for me because I tend to be a perfectionist with my work. And if I want that rust out, by golly, I want that rust out. We're going to have to do the best we can. And at some point, um, I'm just going to stop the process and say, this is as good as it gets. Uh, either that or it'll all come out perfectly clean and I won't have to and I can just say, oh look, great, we won. So, it's just a matter of accepting the reality. And the reality is, when you deal with old stuff, they're never going to be new. It's just, it's not going to be new. No matter how hard you try, it's still going to be old at the end of the day. So, this is our semi-project. It's, it's the postscript to last week's Let's Clean a Lampshade and sort of the, the prequel to this coming weekend's Let Us Show You How We Put It Back Together Again. And with any luck at all, we're going to get something nice. Now, of course, it's going to be nicer than it was. Remember, it was put together with twist ties from a loaf of bread. Poor Giles. So it's going to be better. It's going to be decent. Uh, we're going to be able to send this back to Josh. She's going to be able to pop it on a lamp, and she's not going to have to hang her head in despair saying, oh, look at this with my bread ties. Although she tells me that she turned the bread ties back toward the wall so nobody could see. I'm like, all right, bye. But we can improve on that. 
how much remains to be seen, but we're going to give it the best try that we can. So that's, that's where our project portion of today's video goes. So now that we've got that, let's talk about the bigger project. My contractor was here today along with his roofing guy. The roofing guy's name is Steve. Um, and by the way, somebody in the comments had said, get him to take his shirt off, take some pictures. And I was like, all right, I'll see what I can do. And who knows? I threw it out to him. Maybe we'll see. He's a nice looking young man. This could be a great deal of fun for all of us. Just watching him up on the roof with no shirt on. But what we have decided to do is we are keeping the same corrugated metal roof. Now, around here, the South Central Pennsylvania, there are a lot of metal roofs. Metal roofs are popular in some parts of the country, not so much in others, not really sure why. In New England, you just saw shingles or shakes. Um, and shakes are like individual shingles made of wood that would be up on your roof. Um, that's what you see in New England. You go to um, the Southern California, you see a lot of Spanish tile. Uh, there are places in the Southwest where they have flat roofs and often they're like rubber and, and coated. You see that in cities where they have large um, um, large buildings that are attached to one another like rows of townhouses and they will have a flat roof on the top it's often rubberized or it's got tar paper and it's got a, uh, just a coating of tar on top of the roof well around here metal roofing is a big thing and usually in residential applications they use something called standing seam metal roof and that's where the panels of the roof come together and where they come together they're they're like bent up and then one side is bent over the other so that flat with this raised seam not unlike this right here this little bit that's raised there we go didn't think i was going to have anything to show you but i do and that's for strength and durability um, again residential application. The schoolhouse was not designed as a residential structure. I have a roof out there on that schoolhouse that is coming down that is 170 years old and it is a corrugated tin roof. Now what they are putting up is a metal roof. I, I don't believe they do tin anymore but it's going to be a corrugated roof too. Now corrugated metal roofing is usually reserved for commercial buildings, for sheds, for outbuildings, for garages. It's, it's, it's considered low end. It's not expensive, but it is what it is. That's what they used. Um, and I'm not willing to make a change. I've, I've had to make some changes. Now let's face it. A tree fell on it and knocked out the back wall. I've already had to make some changes. I'm not going to make any more than I have to. Uh, what I can keep, I'm keeping. And because I can have a corrugated roof put on this, the roofer will do it. This is the way I'm going. So this is good. The roof will look very much as it did when it was originally put on. Now, when this roof was originally put on, uh, we're going back 170 years. The schoolhouse is 1852. So the people who were up there nailing that tin on were probably not roofers. Um, they were probably itinerant workers that the county hired to do this sort of thing, you know, put a roof up on the schoolhouse. Um, they were probably the same sort of people, the same group of people the county would have hired if they needed somebody to, I, I don't know, you know, cut down some trees, build a bridge, drag a team of horses over to the next county, whatever. They were probably not 
skilled workers. They were probably laborers with whatever basic level of skill that working men had in the 1850s. And I don't mean that in a sexist way because we've already talked about the fact that there were women in the 1850s who had fine carpentry skills that were just astounding. Um, they made cabinetry. They, well, Victorian housewives were very bored and very frustrated, and some of them really gave vent to that with their coping saw in their hands. That's not what these guys were. They were not fine cabinet makers. They were guys who had a hammer and some sheet tin. So it probably went up without very precise measurements, um, and which is not to say they did a bad job. I mean, believe me, the carpentry work in that school building and the masonry is, is really top notch. It's just that this is probably not what they did. They were probably not professional masons. They were probably not professional carpenters. They were probably just guys who did whatever the county paid them to do on that particular weekday. So we're going to be able to watch this go back up. It will look very much the same as it did when the roof was first put up before it had begun to age um, and, it, you know, and, and the color altered and so on. So that is a really big plus. And for the most part, when this goes up, it's going to be largely the same way it was done 170 years ago. So needless to say, I'm going to be out there with a the camera. Uh, I'm going to be doing videos. I'm going to be taking still pictures. I want to make sure we have this and, you know, we are able to, to really go out and take a good hard look at what's happening. Uh, mostly because we were really not able to do much of this um, when the back corner of the schoolhouse was going up. Uh, mostly because they were working under a tarp. It was dark. It was gloomy. I'm surprised the workmen could see what they were doing. But we had a lot of things going against us because that work was being done in the middle of winter. Uh, now that we are moving into spring, and hopefully we'll get some more daylight. Now we're going to be good. So that's going to be our next um, adventure that starts on Monday. So as soon as we get out there on Monday and get started, uh, the expectation is the roof will go up within the space of about a week. So stick around because we got some stuff for you coming up. We will be back together tomorrow morning. I will tell you um, how this, uh, this sort of OxyClean paste is doing. Um, it, does, it does actually, here, so far, seems to be making a bit of an improvement. We'll see. I'm not expecting miracles, but I'm absolutely going to give it a try. So, stay safe, stay sane. Remember, you have the comments. If you are feeling like you're starting to get to the end of your rope, leave a comment. I, I promise I read all my comments. I will get back to you. Other people are willing to do this too. We have several people who've said in the comments they are happy to do a little outreach. So let's take advantage of our YouTube friends. Have a great day. See y'all tomorrow.